and good morning from Paddington Station. So today I decided, welcome to the vlog by the way. Today I decided it would be a great day to escape London for a day and just head out to the countryside and have a great time. And of course bring the camera along as well. So the plan is off to Oxford to meet my good friend Isco. And if you've been following this vlog for, some, for a long time, you would have seen him in some previous vlogs. And I actually haven't seen him in a long time. So it's going to be amazing to catch up with a good friend of mine. He's also an amazing photographer. And I'm sure it'll be a fun day of just catching up and taking some awesome photos in the beautiful Oxford. So really excited to head out there, change the scenery, really beautiful English town. And I can't wait to show you all the sights. Train tickets in hand, let's go do this. By the way, how beautiful is this first class train carriage? Mm -mm -mm. Look at this lap of luxury and that's all you'll be seeing in the first class because I'm back to cattle class, gonna find my seat and then we'll take it from there. And back where I belong, right here in the normal class. Anyway, I shouldn't act like such a snob anyway. It's really no big deal and I love train journeys anyway and it's just awesome because the train ride's really smooth. It doesn't stop as at many stations at the tube. Clearly not as packed as the tube either and you can just enjoy, be alone with your thoughts for a bit, watch a movie, do some editing as well. Also always awesome. And yeah, it's just really peaceful and relaxing. Kind of like therapy, yoga, to each their own, right? I just love train journeys and yeah, can't wait to get on the rails and head out there. just arrived in the Oxford city centre and look how beautiful this place is. Got these really cute English roads and all the architecture is really old and very 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 um, quaint and beautiful really. So I actually woke up at 4am this morning to head all the way here because right now it's 7am, one hour away from sunrise and check this out. It's starting to get that deep blue, blue hour coming through and that's exactly the, what I came here for. Just to get all the perfect light throughout the day, starting with the dark blue hour moving on to sunrise if there is one because the weather is quite overcast actually so we'll see how that goes but just gotta play with it play the cards you dealt don't complain about them so <laughs> that's what we're doing uh, gonna head to location number one west coast there already and yeah the blue hour is actually looking very promising so fingers crossed for some great photos let's go do this also it's really really cold by the way i don't know if the jacket gave it away yeah it's middle of winter zero degrees <music> So just arrived at photo location number one and that's the famous Radcliffe camera which is this building right here and that's kind of the big bend of Oxford so to speak definitely the main landmark and that's where we thought we'd start here and right now the light is really beautiful because the blue hour is coming through in the sky and then coupled with the lanterns on the side of the, these buildings that are just giving the streets and the cobbles this beautiful yellow orange glow just perfect harmony of the blue in the sky and that makes for some great photos so let me talk you through my composition and the thought process I had in mind when taking this photo So I purposefully set up the camera very low on the tripod to get kind of low to the ground because that accentuates the foreground a lot more and you can pick up a lot of these textures in the foreground. Now I went for a very tight aperture in order to get a lot of depth of field to keep these cobbles in the foreground in focus as well as the uh, library in the background as well. And because it's very low light conditions, you can see it's pretty dark and the, this camera can barely pick up all the details in the building. It's very essential to go for long exposures. So on the tripod, 30 second long exposure makes for some really amazing results. And let me show you what they look like. Really happy with that first photograph, but now that we've got the um, library already photographed from a good angle, trying some different angles as well, and just right now walking all the way around the library just to peek out some different locations and see if the compositions change and what else we can find. And right now I've walked into a side street actually, and I found this little um, alley. And what I love about this is that you got this like 3D effect of the lantern sticking out in the foreground and the library peeking out behind the street corner. So that's kind of a cool effect, a little bit hidden, adds a lot of depth to your photo and that's exactly what I've been trying to photograph. Again, similar situation of the lighting where a little bit of blue hour left, check that out. Coupled of lights coming off the lantern, really nice and complimentary. Got the warm yellow over here with the cold blue over there and it just makes for a very pleasing photo. So let me stop rambling about it and show you guys what it looks like. The other 
most famous monument uh, Oxford has to offer is this right here. This is the Bridge of Sighs. I think that's more of a colloquial term. It has an official name as well. It has something to do with the college names as well. Because it connects, I think it's one or two colleges that are connected. Don't quote me on this. But um, a lot of people say it's actually modeled after the mo one of the most famous bridges in Venice as well. I don't know if that's true or just pure coincidence. But what I do know is that it looks beautiful. So just trying to capture this. And we've been walking around either side of this bridge just to find a really great composition. And the one that stood out for me most is in this side street right here. And the reason being is I just love um, this texture down here of the pavement and these yellow lines and these cobblestones because it makes for some really amazing leading lines that lead you into the light here of this lantern and then the bridge sprawling out behind it. So that to me is the perfect shot. Having walked around and tried all the different angles, this is the one I'm most happy with. So again, I've opted to put the tripod a little bit lower just because when you crouch down and get your camera a bit lower than eye level, you get something a little bit more dramatic than uh, you used to from your normal perspective walking around. So what did you think of that shot? Let me know in the comments below. And the other benefit of coming here so really early in the morning is, is that this, these streets are very empty and you got them all to yourselves, which makes for a very clean, empty looking shot, which is what I prefer personally in my shots. Not much of a street photographer that likes a lot of hustle bustle in their shots. I like quiet and serene. And if you were to come here during lunchtime or so, there's tourists out in, uh, in heaps. There's just big groups of tourists that come into town. And of course, this is one of their most uh, sought after locations as well. So you'll see a lot of people taking selfies, a lot of people getting their shots. And if you're going to come here, I'd recommend coming really early, crack of dawn. Also, besides the beautiful light that you get in the mornings, you'll also have the place all to yourself. So with that being said, I don't know what we're going to do right now. I'm going to discuss with Isco. He's right here. And then we're going to figure out the plan. And there'll be lots more photos along the way. So after a very wet and rainy afternoon, where we took no photos at all because it's been extremely overcast and very unpleasant, here we are back at it again. And the plan is to head into this church behind me, because it actually got a beautiful viewing platform right at the top. So we're going to head up there, and then the plan is to take photos of this beautiful landmark again, just like we did this morning, but this time from a height of course. The Radcliffe camera, of course, needs no introduction because that's what we photographed this morning during blue hour. And we're hoping to replicate the exact same thing again when it goes dark. And then that's actually the best time to take photos on a rainy, moody day like this because when it goes dark, blue hour comes in and you wouldn't even believe it was an ugly day all along because that blue hour just makes up all for it. Well, that's the plan anyway. Let's hope it all pans out the way I just described and we'll be on to some great photos. Let's do this. Well, the plan to head to the top of the church re resulted in dismal failure because they actually brought the move, uh, closing time forward and said we can't go up anymore, which is kind of unfair if you ask me, but nonetheless, we were not allowed to go up and now we're trying to make the best of the situation and try to find some alternative plans because we're heading into blue hour really fast right now and the lights starting to look really good with the street lights coming back on again. Check this out. So loving this mood. And now we just got to find the right location to make the most of this mood and get some photos regardless. So quickly headed onto Google, did some research and found an awesome rooftop bar that we're going to head up to instead. And hopefully they'll let us up. Fingers crossed. Let's talk about the uh, Varsity Club here in Oxford. So the view is pretty spectacular as you can see. Well, not spectacular, but it'll do for now. It's pretty good. Got the Radcliffe camera back here, and that's the church tower we were originally planning going up. And so we moved all the few blocks further down and instead have a view onto the church tower and the Radcliffe camera. And the conditions for photography are also pretty good right now, given the uh, overcast weather, because like I said, blue hour, a lot of um, city lights coming on as well, just to pick up a little bit of light and glow as well in the atmosphere, which just looks beautiful. But what we should talk about at the Varsity Club, which I would recommend coming to for the view, but not the service, because when we came up here, the waiter came and he just shat all over us, said we have to leave because we're using professional cameras and we're not even here to buy anything, which isn't even true because their bar is closed. We came up here to the rooftop bar 
to order to expecting to order drinks, but nobody was here to serve us, and yet we got shut out for not buying drinks, and then already accused for not buying them despite not having bought them yet. So it was an unpleasant experience anyway. But I uh, just wanted to give you the full spectrum of what we're going through here, and yeah, negativity aside, just focus on these photos and hopefully get some good ones. So what did you think of that shot that over there on the rooftop? Let me know in the comments below. So I turned to night in Oxford and I decided to head back in London and I'm right back where I started, here in London Paddington and that's exactly where I'm going to be ending this vlog. So thanks for joining me, thanks for joining me on this adventure to Oxford and if you're interested in more adventures just like this, be sure to like and subscribe and I hope to see you in a future video. So before I go, I'm going to leave you with a time lapse that I shot on top of that rooftop back in Oxford.